everybody who's watching. Um, yes, the topic today is uh, TSP, uh, Transit Signal Priority, and um, I'll try to keep it to 35 to 40 minutes um, so we have uh, more time for questions. Um, so I will start with a very um, basic uh, definition. Um, so what is TSP? Uh, so the idea of TSP is is the process something that happens over time. So vehicles, uh, transit vehicles are detected as they approach the intersection and then there will be an adjust adjustment in the signal facing um, of the signal controller. So the idea here is uh, to reduce um, transit delay. What are the elements? So we need at least three things to get TSP to work. Um, the first one is an onboard, so onboard the bus, a, a TSP request generator. So as the bus is moving, the bus should um, tell, broadcast its location and that it's requesting um, priority to the downstream intersection. There should be another um, element at the intersection where there is a system that can receive that signal from the bus and then can um, relay this information to the signal controller. And then finally, at the signal controller, there should be uh, a mechanism that allows that um, request to be processed and to respond to it either by um, changing the phase or extending a phase or adding a new phase. We'll talk more about that um, in a little bit. So why doing TSP? Um, so previous research have shown that there are benefits associated with um, given transit priority. Most of the benefits are associated with um, transit reliability and also to allow um, late bus recovery. In terms of uh, speed improvements, the at least we haven't, you know, in the literature and in Portland, we haven't really measured significant uh, speed improvements, and that's related to the way TSP is implemented uh, in our region. So, but for sure, to increase reli reliability and um, recover from um, from buses that are late, that's it's it's very useful. The attractive thing uh, about TSP is that it doesn't require a lot of expensive hardware and expensive changes in the roadway or geometry. So it's somewhat inexpensive and also can be easily implemented. Though, as we're going to see today, um, the evaluation of the TSP may not be so easy. Um, and I'll talk a bit more about that. So, um, a little bit of background. Uh, there have been a lot of people that work in the past in uh, TSP, and I'll try to highlight what they have done, and in the next slide, what we have done that is different. So, some people have worked in analytical models, so just more theoretical approaches to the benefits. There have been simulations, uh, so trying to simulate a given street or environment. Uh, most of these studies trying to look at, you know, before the TSP is installed, what kind of uh, benefit can be potentially achieved. And then there have been empirical studies. Um, we have done, you know, several here in the, in the, in Oregon. And typically looking at before after conditions and they have been usually done using only bus data and they are done at the corridor level. So TSP it really works one intersection at a time, but uh, the way the studies have been done in the past, they have been done at the corridor level, and that, you know, then the benefits, uh, it's very hard to show what is the benefit of each intersection when you're looking at the corridor a couple of miles of, um, with many transit signals, I mean, with many uh, traffic signals and, you know, many different intersections. So. Um, 
that was what was done in the past, and uh, performance measures uh, typically they have been uh, they have focused mostly on bus travel time, schedule adherence, uh, headway variability, and then there have been a few studies that look at uh, delay for other vehicles. So um, when we did this work, um, we noticed there was a lack of um, effectiveness and efficiency measures, and especially at the intersection level. So why um, we did this study and what we added to existing literature? Um, the first thing was that we were using um, real-world data, and we were integrating uh, data sets that had not been integrated before. Also, we were looking at each intersection at the time, instead of looking at the corridor, and we were able to integrate uh, signal timing and the actual phases uh, from the controller that uh, most studies in the past either did simulations or they look at uh, corridors just based on the bus data, but um, there was not um, an actual integration of this actual signal timing and phases. In terms of uh, performance measures, um, we had to develop some new ones uh, just to focus on the intersection level, and again to you know to really look at effectiveness and efficiency. And I'm going to talk later about what we mean by effectiveness and efficiency. The other thing that we did that was um, unique at the time was to compare early green and green extension. So they have been in, you know, compared in terms of simulation or analytical studies, but they have not been compared in uh, utilizing real-world data. So hopefully this is, um, you know, enough of the motivation for the study, and I would like now to go to describe um, just briefly our corridor. So we had a corridor roughly between four and five miles. So we look at uh, Southeast Powell Boulevard. Um, there are two bus routes on, on this Powell corridor, and we have um, 12 um, traffic signals in the study. There were near side and six near side, and we had uh, many more far side signals. So we were able to look at um, the 12 signals, but then we had um, 18 uh, stops that were close to the signals, and we could, you know, able to see uh, what was the performance of the different signals in relation to the bus stops. So this uh, gives um, an idea about the distance between uh, bus stops, and so you can see that in this corridor the median distance was approximately one, I mean, 0 0.12, 0 0.13 uh, miles. So, our TSP, um, there are different ways to implement TSP, uh, so I'm going to describe uh, what was the implementation that uh, we were evaluating. Uh, so, the first thing, um, in terms of requesting TSP, um, in, in, in our region, uh, TSP is requested only when the bus is on route, when the doors are closed, and when the bus is more than 30 seconds late. So if uh, these three conditions are not met, then the bus will not be um, requesting TSP. On the other hand, if these three conditions are met, then the bus, um, in the front of the bus, there is an emitter that will send a signal that that signal should be captured by an optical detector that is at the intersection, and then that optical detector will send uh, a signal that a TSP uh, request has been received, and that uh, signal, uh, that request will go down to the traffic controller. And then the traffic controller has the kind of the job of um, determining first whether to grant the TSP phase, then 
which uh, TSP phase should be granted because there are different options. In our case, early green or green extension. And then when that TSP phase uh, should start and end. So the controller has to make very quick um, decisions in terms of what to do uh, with regard to this request. A little bit more about the, the corridor and the traffic controllers. Um, something that is a bit unique about this corridor is that the, there was um, a SCAT was implemented. So a SCAT is an adaptive uh, traffic control system. Instead of you know each intersection uh, being you know uh, working on its own or with time of the day plans, the SCATs try to look at the whole corridor and tries to optimize um, signal timing and phasing uh, to provide better performance for the whole corridor. So it's not um, it's a more advanced um, you know way of trying to look at traffic control at the corridor level. And one thing about uh, adaptive traffic control is that um, the median cycle length and the green phase and red phase duration may change by time of the day and by direction. So you see here in this slide that, for example, um, 39th has uh, the green time is much smaller than, for example, 33rd. So 39th is a major uh, cross street a major arterial, so that's why the green time is kind of roughly split uh, between Powell and, and 39th, and that's not the case, for example, with 33rd, where, you know, it's a relatively minor street with, you know, with low volumes of traffic, so most of the time um, buses on Powell get green at 33rd, and, you know, the red time is much smaller. So the data integration, something that was different about this study was this, uh, the issue about integrating data. So we are you know, fortunate to have uh, many sources of data. Uh, for example, for the buses, we had the bus location and all the information in terms of um, boarding alightings, number of passengers, at any stop along the corridor. So we had all the information from the bus and also we had the, um, the time and the location of the bus when they were uh, arriving or leaving uh, a bus stop. From SCATs, we had also vehicle counts. So we're able to tell uh, with, you know, the number of um, traffic counts. So being able to measure in a way congestion and demand on the corridor and the side streets. And something that is very important too is that we're able to get, you know, very detailed um, second, at the second and um, a tenth of a second level signal phase logs. So that means that we knew exactly when for each intersection what, uh, when the green phase started, when the green phase ended, when a TSP phase was granted, for how long, when it ended, when it started, and so on. So we're able to see everything that uh, took place at the intersection in terms of uh, signal uh, phases and times. And then we had um, information that we could get from, you know, from the corridor, uh, measuring or looking at um, Google Maps, maps and so on, in terms of the geometry, the distance between uh, number of lanes and, and so on. And that's important to also determine when the bus is going to arrive. So integrating all this um, data uh, sources was not easy. It was actually one of the most um, time consuming, you know, parts of the, the research. So it took a lot, a lot of time to develop algorithms um, and to think about how to do the evaluation, but the data integration was not easy because, um, you know, these data sets are not developed to be easily integrated. So it, you know, it takes um, a major effort, I think, to, you know, to try to put this together. Um, so uh, a little bit about the TSP phases. Uh, in our case, we had two options. Um, 
So the system, the controller, if the controller decided to grant a TSP phase, it had two options. One was to provide an early green phase, so meaning that it would truncate a red phase and begin the green phase early to have the transit vehicles that they were waiting at the red light to start moving a bit earlier. And the other option is the green extension phase. So this is extending the green phase to let you know the bus speed up and go through the intersection before the signal turns red. So the green extension, assuming it's assuming that um, that the bus is already moving and we'll be able to uh, you know take advantage of this extra green time that is added. So a little bit about um, how we did it, and it's fairly, you know, complicated. There is some notation on the slide, and you know, there is there are some papers that you want to, you know, if you want to, you can look at later. I'll try to explain. This is um, a space-time diagram. So on the x-axis we have here time, and dti at the bottom shows the time that we know, for example, when the bus departed from, let's say, a bus stop or the last location. And then along the y-axis we have distance. So the bus is moving, you know, upwards, so it's moving along uh, the street, and it might be requesting a uh, signal priority. And then, for example, at any given time, we know what is the phase. So in this case, we had um, a green phase, then we have a red phase, and then we have here an early green. So meaning that this kind of different shade of green that you see between the red and the um, darker red is that early green that was granted by the controller. And then we know what is the arrival time of the bus at the point downstream or at the next stop. So, um, just to recap, we know the bus times and locations before and after crossing the intersection. We know all the signal timing and phases, uh, but what we do not know is the bus arrival time at the intersection. So, exactly at what time is the bus arriving to the intersection or to a queue that may have developed at the intersection. So, that's an unknown. Um, and to try to look at that, um, because there is not enough data, we have to look at um, speeds and trajectories between the locations before and after the intersection, and looking at um, historical speeds and crossing times, we are able to estimate the probability, the probability that the bus uh, would arrive at the intersection at the given time. So this is fairly, you know, a bit complicated and it's better described in the paper, so I recommend that if you really want to look at how we um, estimated this, um, I later I'm going to uh, give you a reference. So this is for the early green phase. Uh, the same thing can be done for the green extension phase. So again, we know one point before and after um, crossing the intersection, we know the location and we know the time and in this case if you look at the the signal uh, facing you see that it is a green then a red face then another green and the blue color that um, I'm showing on the screen that's the L, the green extension face so that time was added to the green face because a bus was approaching the intersection and had requested um, signal priority and after the green extension, there will be a red, and then the phases will continue as usual. So, um, in a way, this is a bit of a forensic work because we have many, you know, potential cases in terms of when the bus arrives uh, as a function of the location of the bus before and after and the time, and that in relation to the signal timing. So the work is trying to find what is the most likely outcome uh, based on the data that we have, and that's why we use uh, a probability distribution. 
so going to the more um, specific, you know, concrete outcomes. Uh, so our objectives and questions. So we try to look at define good performance measures. We try to answer the question that um, that was not answered before in terms of uh, comparing green extension and early green in the real world. Which one is more effective? And then we try to also look at time savings uh, trade-offs. Um, if what was going on in terms of um, savings for buses versus passengers and you know cross streets. Looking at some um, performance measures, we look at four different ones. So one is TSP frequency, basically trying to detect problems if the TSP working properly. I'm going to explain that a little bit in more detail later. How responsive is TSP to the uh, request? How timely is the response? And then how efficient is the response? So we have four different uh, ways of looking at um, the performance. Timeliness uh, takes into account from the bus point of view what is the probability of really benefiting from the TSP phase. And how much time can be saved uh, per request. The TSP efficiency is more from a traffic signal system point of view uh, from the controller in terms of how much time has been saved per phase granted. And then we did that normalizing to seconds uh, per second of TSP phase and I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. So looking at TSP frequency. so. This kind of allow us to see if the system is working properly. So, for example, um, we have here on the x-axis the different um, intersections from 26 to 70 seconds, and then we have in blue how many buses were requesting TSP and how many did not request TSP per day on average. So, you can see that uh, it's fairly constant you know, in terms of the number of buses that request TSP and the ones that did not uh, request TSP over the study period. Though when you look at the actual number of TSP phases that were granted by the system, um, you see that there is a big difference. So here again we have the same intersections from 26 to 70 seconds and then we can see that uh, for the study period the number of actual phases that were granted uh, were very low at 26 and 33rd. And then, you know, later talking to uh, staff at the city, th there was a problem at 33rd and the system was not working uh, properly. So uh, this kind of uh, just looking at the frequency of request and the frequency of uh, phases granted kind of let you do a first kind of um, analysis in terms of um, if there is an intersection where um, the TSP system is not working properly. Moving on, um, the other, um, the second measure we looked at is responsiveness. So basically we were trying to measure as a bus approaches an intersection and request um, TSP, how many phases are granted by the system within a cycle? So we just use a cycle as a time for, you know, kind of the bus have one cycle to, you know, to be responded to. And again, here we have um, intersections at the bottom, 39th to 72nd, and then we have four options. Uh, either within a cycle, the system did not grant a green extension or early green. That's in the kind of darker um, gray uh, color. And we see that, you know, that tends to be most of the time uh, the system was not uh, granting a phase even though the bus was requesting one. Um, so early green is in red. Uh, we see that there are some early greens and, for example, some intersections like 52nd westbound, we see the most, um, you know, number of um, the highest percentage in terms of early green phases. There were cases where green extension was um, granted and then we see that, for example, at 69th uh, eastbound, you know, 
almost 50% uh, of the time, uh, a green extension phase was granted. And then in green, there are cases where the system is granting both a green extension and an early green. And then, you know, you see that in some cases, like in 39th westbound, that's uh, a fairly significant percentage. So, uh, this is measuring within a cycle, you know, what percent of the time the system will grant a, a TSP phase when um, the bus is requesting one. Moving on to the third performance measure. So in this case is timeliness. And timeliness is a bit um, more complicated in the sense that um, we are trying to see if the bus actually benefited from the TSP phase. So in this case, we have uh, four potential cases. If this is a green extension phase, it could be that uh, we have a um, situation case D where the bus requested um, a green extension, but it was not granted. So there was no green extension. That's the, the gray darker uh, color. Then we could have the case where the bus was trajectory A was crossing during the green and the system uh, granted a green extension, but that was late. So it was after the bus uh, crossed the intersection. Then we have uh, case B that is actually on time green extension, meaning that the bus was requesting green extension as the um, bus was approaching the intersection and then it was granted on time and the bus was able to benefit from the green extension. And finally, we have case C where the bus was approaching, but it was not able to um, really take advantage of that green extension because when the bus arrived at the intersection, the green extension had already ended and the bus had to wait for the end of a red phase to continue. So four potential cases and we see that with green extension that on time green extension is very hard to achieve that's you know that's the idea and you know you see that in some intersections like 39 westbound or 52nd you see like a small percentage of on time but you know most of the time green extension is it's, it's very hard to you know to to use Looking at early green, um, again, in this case, we have four potential cases. Um, case D, the bus trajectory uh, at the bottom, so the bus is approaching, and the bus was requesting TSP, but in this case, um, no uh, early green phase was granted. Then we have uh, case A, looking at the bottom, where the bus is approaching the intersection, and then the uh, early green is going to be given later. So the bus is not going to really um, use that uh, early green. Then we have case B where the bus is approaching the intersection. It encounters the red phase and then is still requesting the um, DSP and then the system provides an early green. So that's, that's the good case that's on time early green, so the bus was able to benefit from that. And then we have a uh, case C where the early green was too early. So it was, the bus was approaching here trajectory C, but um, the, you know, uh, early green phase was provided before uh, the bus uh, arrived to the intersection. Hey Miguel, so, this is how. Um, yeah. Before you move on, there is a question that I think relates to what you were talking about. Um, uh -huh. Can uh, can you give an example of a situation where both uh, an early green and a green extension are granted on the same cycle? Was that on this slide or the slide before? Yeah, so that's that's in the slide before, and um, the you know it could be the case that the bus is approaching um, and. The way the system works here um, in, in, in the Portland region is that the bus is requesting um, 
like TSP, and then the signal controller doesn't really know if the bus has, uh, you know, crossed the intersection or not. So it can provide early green, hoping that the bus is going to make it. Uh, I mean, green extension, hoping that the bus is going to make it through the intersection, but if the bus doesn't make it through the intersection, then it can later provide um, an early green because the bus was waiting at, um, at the intersection. Okay, so, great. Great, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, the fourth uh, performance measure, it's um, looking at effectiveness. So, in this case, um, looking at the probability that the bus requesting TSP will benefit from a TSP phase. Um, so, trying to look at this on-time early green and on-time green extension and, you know, when we put uh, from the previous slides together the results, we see that um, on time early green is much, um, you know, that um, it's easier to achieve uh, than green extension. We see, you know, some intersections where sometimes we get an effectiveness of, you know, almost 15% of the time, where this, the phase, the TSP phase is granted on time, and we see that you know, for green extension, the numbers are much smaller. Um, so there is a big difference right there. So the one thing, though, about uh, early green and green extension, um, green extension, it's harder to achieve, it's harder to arrive on time, but if the bus, the bus arrives on time, then there is a very big payoff because here we're talking about, you know, cycles that could be two minutes. So if the bus can make it um, in the green extension, then that bus is saving two minutes of travel time. With the early green, the bus is already waiting at the intersection and, you know, the, the red face is kind of truncated by 10 seconds, for example. So the bus is really gaining 10 seconds. So in terms of payoff, um, green extension is has a much higher payoff, but in terms of actually, you know, being able to get one of those is, is much more difficult. Uh, so, and this is uh, what we have now in terms of, um, in this slide we look at, in the y-axis we have the average total passenger time savings per TSP request and at the bottom we have the different intersections. So, even though um, green extensions have a much higher potential payoff, uh, because it's so much uh, harder to actually benefit from one, we see that the benefit actually, uh, on average, it's higher from early green phases, and that's that's you know, fairly consistent in most intersections, like 39th, 52nd, 65th, 69th, uh, 71st. There are only two intersections, um, 42nd and 72nd, where green extension actually outperformed um, early green in terms of um, average save, uh, time saved per uh, TSP request. This and uh, then the next slide. Uh, here we are looking at passengers. So average time saved per early green phase. So in the y-axis again we have the average total passenger time. So to get these numbers, we were actually taking into account um, how many you know passengers were on board at the time when that uh, when the phase was granted, and we see. Um, in seconds on the on the y-axis, and then we can see we can compare uh, also in in blue we have far side intersections and in red near side um, intersections. And again, we see a you know very you know a lot of variability, and you know in terms of um, each intersection may behave in a different way, and even the benefits may be different uh, in terms of the direction of travel. We can see sometimes very different outcomes uh, when we compare eastbound 
versus westbound. Um, and I think that's one of the most interesting things about our study was that we were able to look at um, one intersection at a time. Uh, in other cases, uh, people look at corridors, just grouping intersections, and they actually, you know, they behave in a very different way in terms of the benefits when you look at um, in one intersection at a time and by direction of travel. Um, then the next one is, uh, the previous one was for early green and this one is for the green extension phase and we have the same scale that we had before but you notice now that uh, the benefits are, you know, much lower that, you know, the bars are really, the columns are really, you know, closer to 20 seconds. In the previous case with um, early green we had up to 140 seconds of benefit on average at some intersections. In this case we had, you know, in the best case up to 30 seconds of time saved per green extension phase. So, um, the efficiency in terms of time savings versus delay, um, every time the controller is given a TSP phase, uh, that can benefit the main uh, main direction of travel, the main the arterial, but uh, has a potential issue problem in terms of delays for the cross streets, for the minor streets. So, and that's something that also we wanted to quantify in terms of trying to make sure that that um, there were not, you know, excessive delays were not created at the cross streets and. This issue about cross street delay can be very important when there is an extension given to um, the green phase, so the green extension, and there are many, many vehicles wait, waiting in a queue at the cross street. So if you extend the, uh, the green on the main arterial and there are already many vehicles waiting on the side street, that will be, you know, there will be a lot of delay added, especially if the bus was not able to benefit from that uh, green extension. So we are trying to also measure that and overall in terms of uh, summary of the findings, the, in terms of green extension, we saw that the time savings were kind of fairly close to the delays that were caused, so it was kind of even in terms of trading off uh, benefits on the main versus delay on the uh, on the side streets. With the early green, we saw the opposite, that the overall time savings were much higher than the delay that was caused on the side streets. So um, early green seemed to be, you know, performing much better in terms of for, for the bus and the bus passengers, but also for the side street traffic too. So, um, just wrapping up with some discussion. Um, so, I just want to say that um, the findings from this study may be site-specific, but the methodology that we follow and what is in the paper in terms of formulas and so on is, you know, transferable to many other corridors and cities. Um, also, that the performance measures that we proposed, I think, there are, you know, can be applicable uh, anywhere. Also mentioned that the, how difficult it is to integrate the data, so ideally um, jurisdictions and agencies and um, different uh, groups that provide the data can in the future work to have an issue integration process because um, it's not done in a way that um, right now that it can be easily integrated. Something else that is um, that it was very important and we realized at, at you know, from the beginning was that um, synchronization and data accuracy is very, very important uh, for this study. Um, what's going on is um, early green or green extension can be eight seconds or, you know, 10 seconds. And, you know, if you are talking about uh, clocks that are not, you know, perfectly synced, for example, if there is a clock that is two or three seconds in one data set off, that can be, you know, maybe 50% of the phase is already, you know, uh, biased by the 
lack of uh, synchronization between the clocks. So, in, in this case, I think it's uh, very, very important to check the data quality because if the data is not, has not very good quality, then it will be very hard to try to get any, uh, any reasonable or valid uh, performance measure. So, um, also it's very, we saw from the data that it's, you know, for TSP to work, the data actually that, you know, the request that goes from the bus actually have to get to the intersection and then you have to get to the controller. Sometimes, for example, with the optical, uh, you know, uh, devices, if there is an obstruction, say like a tree started, you know, was growing and, you know, a branch gets in the way, that might, for example, affect, um, you know, that request. And I think it's um, something that is mm, very hard and that uh, it's difficult still for TSP systems to do is to, when there is a um, significant queue, the bus stop location uh, might not be enough because to actually benefit from the TSP, it's necessary to know the bus speed and how long the bus will need to uh, move through a queue of vehicles, you know, ahead in terms of um, reaching and passing the intersection. So, it's, you know, that's, that's a kind of difficult uh, thing to try to quantify on the fly and that's, I think that's a, a challenge that still remains. Um, so, uh, in terms of uh, green extension, green extension is uh, much uh, harder to provide in a way that is effective and by what I, I said in the previous uh, point that for green extension to work, you know, to know more information in terms of when the bus is located, the travel speed and if there are vehicles in a queue in front of the bus. Uh, so, the other thing that in, in our case, in this case, was um, interesting too, is that um, the SCATS behaves as a, like a black box. So, there was really no TSP logic that we knew that, um, you know, so it's a commercial system and it's not possible to know what is the logic that uh, SCATS uh, uses to grant TSP uh, phases and the type of phase. So, there are other systems that are more transparent uh, and that might help a little bit in the analysis. In our case, uh, we, we saw the outcome of um, what SCATS, SCATS was doing, but we didn't um, actually know why SCATS was doing that. And finally, I think it's, um, you know, in terms of devaluation, um, you can look at this as a glass half full or half empty. So, the good news is that the system has a lot of potential, so even though in this case there are still, you know, uh, some issues, overall the system doesn't create more delays than savings and, you know, with the early green it, it does create um, savings for transit vehicles. And, you know, being optimistic, there is a lot of room for improvement and um, I think that's the benefit of doing the real world, um, you know, evaluation that um, it's very time consuming, but then you get to know exactly, you know, how much you can improve uh, the system that you have already. Going to some acknowledgements, uh, Steve Callas and at the time David Crow was at TriMet, they help us a lot in terms of providing the data and help us um, understand some of the issues and intricacies of um, the data collection and the data we had. Willie Rotish and Peter Kunz were, uh, again, uh, help us uh, in terms of providing data from the SCATS system on OMPAO. And um, these are the references that um, I mentioned, uh, especially the paper on top. This one has um, a lot of the, you know, the formulas and methodology we used to get to some of the data we I presented here. Um, and then there is, uh, if you want more, there is the report can be from down, downloaded from Trek, and that actually Wei Fang uh, was a PhD student of mine at the time, and he, you know, his PhD dissertation was about this topic, and so in his dissertation there is even more detail um, about all the presentation that I just gave. And with this, I think it's time if there is any to go to questions.
Yeah, right. Great. Thanks, Miguel. Um, we have about 11 questions, and we have about 11 minutes left of the webinar to answer them. So I'm just going to go through the questions in the order they w were asked um, online, and then um, I'll ask you the questions, and then you can hopefully answer them for the audience. So the first one is, does the study corridor feature any geometry elements that may impact performance, such as Q-jump lanes? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, we didn't have um, in any intersection a, a Q jump lane. So, in in some cases at some intersections there is a dedicated you know bus lane that mm -hmm. in most cases is also shared with the right turn, okay. right turn traffic. But there was no a formal um, Q jump um, you know um, setting for any of the intersections. Okay, great. And then, are bus operators aware that a TSP request has been sent? No, they don't. Uh, so there is um, there is actually, you know, in, inside the bus there is um, this the there is um, a controller that is checking that the bus the actual time with the scheduled time and is calculating if the bus is late or not, and then. Without any driver intervention, uh, the operator doesn't have to do anything. That the system will request a TSP, um, you know, will request TSP without the driver having to do anything. Okay. And then, in in uh, this one also relates to the the detection. So, the, did the system use checkout detection? Are you do you know? Yeah, we we know that. It does not. So the bus checks in, but there is no reliable way in this system to really um, know that um, the bus has uh, checked out. At least in, in the data we had, we were not able to see that um, because another piece of data that you know that um, that it would be potentially useful to have is is to know exactly if the controller knows that the bus has already crossed um, and that's you know that information was not available um, so okay and, and as a follow-up to that this um, so Bart uh, um, asked another question so do you feel like the study could quantify the benefit of checkout detection it seemed that effectiveness was low overall which could be improved significantly by eliminating ineffective requests and could the study data be used to identify what the delay savings could be if checkout was implemented? I know that was a mouthful, but no, 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 no. It, it's fine. So, yeah, checkout would be very useful. Um, so, for example, with with the green extension, um, if if the bus has already you know crossed the intersection, then uh, the controller will you know. Can potentially eliminate uh, that phase, uh, the the green extension phase. Um, though, again, it's I think it's it, it has to you know uh, it's related to the issue in terms of when the bus is checking out, is checking out after crossing the intersection or when arriving to the intersection. Uh, because you know when it's if if the bus is very very close about to uh, cross the intersection and then. Um, the, is checking out, then you know the face might change, and uh, and the bus is not registered anymore uh, mm -hmm. as requesting a TSP face. Mm -hmm. uh, so in, in in this case, I think it's it's a limitation of the Opticom technology that um, that you know because it's really you know related to sending a signal using this device. Um, it, it depends on you know there is a distance that has to be calibrated in terms of. Um, Within what distance the controller will accept a request, and then you know, some, in some cases, if the distance is too far or too close, uh, it will not be um, you know valid in terms of the what the controller you know for, from the controller point of view. So yeah, okay. but but yeah, the the, the checkout uh, information will be very useful, especially for the um, for the green extension. Okay. Not so much for the early green because then that's an initial case because this, the bus is already you know is waiting in a queue at the intersection and then that makes it easier. Yeah. 
Okay, so I'm going to jump around. I think there are several questions regarding SCATs because um, you specifically, so Powell, Powell, the Powell corridor specifically uses SCATs um, for the signal control. So will a system with SCATs and without SCATs make any difference? Um, yeah, we, we look at that um, in terms of um, bus travel times in the corridor before and after SCATs and we notice that, you know, it's a very, you know, depending on the time of the day, for example, when it was very congested, that uh, SCATs tended to, you know, move um, traffic flows in a more efficient uh, manner. Mm -hmm. uh, but we looked at um, bus travel times, but we were not able to look at um, TSP with and without SCATs, because uh, without the SCATs, we didn't have access to the detail um, signal uh, phase data. So that, that was the, you know. So that's the key is to have that, that detailed signal phase data in order exactly. to. Exactly. So that, that was, you know, before SCATs, we didn't have that data, so we were not able to integrate the data sets. Uh, so for that reason, we were not able to compare with and, and without the SCATs. So, Potentially, it's possible that you know uh, people from the city can go and install um, something to start logging all the you know, faces and TSP and so on. But it you know it requires that you know go to each intersection, install devices to you know log this um, data, and so it's it's much harder. Um, SCADs can you know all the data is um, in a database and that can be recorded and accessed uh, without. Okay. Than anyone to the field. To okay, and so how were your results validated if the impact of the SCAT system is unknown? Well, I mean, we we measure what you know what was happening at the time with the SCAT. So we don't know how this translates to other corridors uh, where there is a different adaptive system or mm -hmm. you know where there is a different strategy, but. I think in terms of general findings, um, it shows that um, green extension is harder, you know, than early green, even though, you know, the payoff is much higher, you know, potentially it's it's much harder to, to have that kind of real-time control data transmission and then processor, um, you know, the controller, uh, the processor, the controller to react to give that phase so that it's timely and effective. Um, so I think that that general finding, I think it will, you know, it's uh, transferable. That mm -hmm. it's much harder to get um, green extension uh, done well. It's obviously that's the ideal case. Mm -hmm. It will be ideal to give um, green extensions uh, in an effective manner, but um, unfortunately it, it's much more data consuming and, you know, it requires, you know, it's harder, I think, to fine tune to to work well. Okay. And then, um, so with the data that you, 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 that you did have access to, would you, how would you expect these results to vary if a GPS-based system is used? Yeah, so that's a good question. So, um, you know, I, that's something that I think we will have to do um, because in, in our case, um, you know, the distance from from the kind of, the, you know, from the bus stop to the intersection, you know, it, it, it varied, but it was like, you know, one twentieth of a mile and mm -hmm. it, it was not a, a very long distance, but, you know, now with the GPS system, we are able to, you know, get at least in, in here in, in, in Portland every five seconds, uh, we get that and that it will give us um, much more accuracy in terms of, you know, getting to know the probability that the bus um, actually benefited or not from, from the TSP phase. Mm -hmm. Even though that will give us more ac accuracy, I don't think that the numbers that we have will change um, in a, such a dramatic way that, you know, that the results, you know, like say, well, that, um, that early greens, I mean, of the green extensions, you know, now it shows that, you know, it's two or three percent that that would, 
you know, move to 50%. You know, I, I would think that there would be a small change in the numbers, uh, mm -hmm. but I don't expect that it will be so dramatic so that the, con you know, the conclusions are, you know, changed. Uh, but, you know, that, again, that's, that should be really, you know, answered with um, an analysis of the new data. So, um, I'll have to be cautious and say that I don't know, uh, but my guess it will be that the conclusions will not change too much, but um, mm -hmm. you never know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this question, um, was the time you used for leaving the step stop accurately measured or was a surrogate such as a door closing used in this situation? Yeah, so the time um, leaving the bus stop was actually, you know, at, the, at a certain distance from being at the bus stop, the, the bus registers that the bus stop has, um, you know, has been left. So. Um, in, in the TriMet system, that's already kind of um, hard coded in terms of how these times are uh, estimated. Mm -hmm. So, and um, we were able to account if um, if the bus had used that uh, service, that bus stop, or not. So we were taking that into account uh, when we did our estimations uh, because you know that makes a difference. Um, a bus that is starting from a bus stop, you know, it has to accelerate and has to gain speed and so on versus a bus that is kind of moving along and is not going to stop. You know, it can, you know, already has a speed of 20 or 25 miles per hour and, you know, can approach the intersection much faster. Um, though, um, one of the issues about the, the current system is that the bus is only, you know, sending information about I'm late and I want a TSP face, mm -hmm. but the bus is not sending any information about, you know, the actual, you know, the accurate location or the actual bus speed either. Or, you know, of course, there is no information about the queue between the bus and the intersection. So, not knowing that um, bus speed at the time when the request is being made, it's also, you know, makes it hard to being able to provide a face that it will actually serve the, the bus when it arrives to the intersection. There is, you know, there is a big difference between a bus moving at 10 or 5 miles per hour versus a bus moving at 20 or 30 miles per hour. And we are talking about short distances, so, you know, that, that means, you know, that um, there is just a few seconds for the controller to react and to, you know, decide what to do in terms of um, giving a face and what type of face and when. Okay, great. So um, it looks like we are running out of time and we have a number of questions left. So I'm just going to ask you the last one and then um, we'll sort through the rest of the questions and email out um, the answers to those um, after the webinar. Um, so the last question is, the TSP will improve the transit travel time and make transit more attractive. Is it applicable to see this change in a high-level demand model and see how uh, the utility of mode change can change? Mode can change, so as the change of the mode share? Yeah, so I, I think that, that the TSP will not change uh, travel time that much because only buses that are late are requesting this. So the other buses that, you know, are running on time I continue, you know, just getting the same travel time, but in in the travel demand model, if there is a variable that looks at reliability and you know on time arrivals in terms of um, servicing the bus stops, uh, then it would make a difference because um, TSP can make a difference in terms of making sure that the buses that are late can recover and can um, you know catch up with the schedule, and that's that's a great benefit. Um, is more for the subset of buses that are late. Uh, the benefit is not so much for the buses that are on time. Okay. So that can be captured in the in the demand model uh, or you know mode choice model. Yeah, that would you know that would show a benefit in terms of um, change of uh, mode election. Yeah. Well, great. Thanks, thanks, Miguel, and thanks for sharing um, the results of your research with us. So this concludes our webinar, and thank you for joining us today. And um, again, thank, thank you, Miguel. You can view 
our other professional development offerings on our website at nitsi.us. Um, this concludes our webinar and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks everyone.